Time for another board game review, and for this board game review, I'll also be reviewing a ramen. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but it's the game Ramen Fury. This was sent to me by Asthma Day, and it's designed by, I believe, Prospero Hall. Now the packaging on this is so nice, I like, almost didn't want to open it. If you look inside, look at that! It's ramen noodles, uh, a ramen noodle box, which is great. Score points by eating bowls of ramen containing delicious combinations of ingredients and flavors. Each type of flavor scores in a different way. At the end of the game, the player with the most combined points from their eaten bowls is the winner. Let me show you how to play. So first off, each player takes three ramen bowl cards, uh, and they have a ramen bowl full and a ramen bowl empty side. But we're gonna have them noodle side up. Uh, you're also gonna get two spoon tokens each. You get three ingredients cards, and you shuffle these up and deal three to each player, and you keep these hidden from the other players. And then, in the middle here, we have the deck of ingredient cards, and we have four cards uh, from the deck face up in the pantry. On each turn, a player must perform two of the following actions. You gotta prep, draw, spoon, restock, eat, or empty. You can do any combination of those two actions in any order, and may perform the same action twice. Also, sometimes you have special actions, free actions, which we'll go over later. First off, you can prep. You can place any ingredient from your hand into one of the bowls. So let's say I put my beef flavor uh, in my first bowl. Uh, ingredients placed in the bowls must always be placed on top of other ingredients in the bowl. Ramen bowls may never have more than five ingredients placed into them, and they may not contain more than one flavor ingredient. So if I put the beef flavor in here, I couldn't put the chicken flavor in there. Or another action, I can draw a card. I can take a face-up card from the pantry, or I can draw the top card of the ingredient deck blind. And let's say I take the top card and put it into my hand. Um, when the card is taken from the pantry, you would replace it with the top card from the ingredient deck. So if I took Chashu, just replace it, and here's another chicken flavor. If you ever have more than five cards in your hand, you have to discard down to five. Another action I can do is spoon. I can discard one of my spoon tokens and take the top ingredient from any bowl belonging to any player, including yourself, actually. But let's say I want this guy's scallions in his bowl. I would take the top ingredient, uh, and I can put it directly onto one of my bowls or into my hand. So let's say I toss the scallions into this bowl. Another action is restocking. If you don't like any of the cards here, you're gonna discard all of them and replace them with four new cards. Now there are special rules if a nori garnish or chili pepper card is revealed. Uh, I'll go over that later. Another action you can do is eat. You can eat a bowl of ramen by flipping it to its finished side along with all the ingredients inside it. A bowl has to have one flavor ingredient and at least one other ingredient in it before it may be eaten. So let's say I decide to eat this bowl. I would uh, take all the ingredients on the bowl and flip it over and now it is eaten. Once it's been eaten, you can no longer put ingredients in here and no ingredients may be spooned from it. It is done it's safe or another action i can empty all the ingredients from one of my ramen bowls into the discard pile let's say i don't want these scallions here i go okay i'm gonna throw these in the garbage once you've done your two required actions and any, any optional special free actions then play continues to the next player now let's go over chili peppers and nori garnish they are special ingredients which can be placed in the bowls the following two ways so whenever you perform a draw or restock action that results in adding chili peppers or nori garnishes to the pantry you may immediately place one of the chili peppers or nori garnishes into a bowl of your choice even another player's bowl so let's say i uh revealed this nori garnish in the pantry and i'm going to toss it into my opponent's bowl to mess them up a bit uh if you did it with a chili pepper uh that would be even worse unless they have the fury flavor because it's a minus one point. I could toss it into a bowl if I revealed it. Once the ingredient has been placed into a bowl, replace it with the next card. But if more chili peppers or nori garnishes are revealed, you can keep placing those immediately as well. During your turn, you may also take chili peppers and nori garnishes from your hand and place them in any bowls belonging to any other players. Uh, playing those from your hand are free actions that do not count as one of the two actions you must take on your turn. So let's go over these. The chili peppers, uh, these are minus one point for every chili peppers in your bowl, unless they have the fury flavor. Uh, and then they would be worth two points each. The nori garnish is just a one point, uh, which isn't bad, but you might want to throw these in people's bowls if they're trying to make a specific type of uh, ramen, and this can kind of mess them up, mess up their points. Once any player has eaten their third bowl of ramen, uh, or if the ingredient deck is empty, uh, the game is done. Each other player gets one last turn, then you score. So let's look at this bowl that we uh, flipped over here. This was the 
beef flavor uh, ramen, uh, meaning you get a certain number of points depending on how many unique proteins you had. Uh, there were four unique protein cards in here. The tofu counts as either protein or uh, vegetable. So this would be 14 points total. Shrimp flavor ramen rewards you if you have pairs of vegetables and protein. So if I have uh, two pairs of uh, protein and vegetables, that'd be eight points. If it was just one pair, it'd be four points. Soy sauce flavor is like beef flavor, but it's about unique vegetable ingredients. So for every unique vegetable ingredient in that bowl, it'd be worth a different number of points, up to 14. Fury flavor, like I mentioned before, uh, these will give you uh, two points for every chili pepper in your bowl. And then chicken flavor, these are worth six points if they contain a pair of matching ingredients, and 10 points if they contain three matching ingredients, but you can't count nori garnish and chili peppers for this flavor. Once you've added up all your bowls, uh, count the points together with the most, whoever has the most points is the winner. If there's a tie, whoever's eaten the most total ingredients is the winner. Uh, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, all you have is just all these nice ingredient cards. Uh, you're throwing these in ramen and trying to score them based off their flavors uh, while trying to avoid people tossing ingredients in your bowls with spoons uh, or stealing your ingredients. And that's pretty much the game. So to start off, the best part of this game, for better or worse, is the packaging. Uh, it looks great. They really went all out making it look like a ramen packet. Like, when I first got it, I was like, wait, is it ramen? No, it, it's a game. But it's, it looks fantastic, and this is cute. Although I kind of hate that you kind of have to cram everything in here, like the tokens and stuff. It's kind of a shitty box, but it looks nice. Um, the cards and the spoons have nice food art. Uh, it Overall, to the art design of this game, it's great. Kudos to you. This It looks fantastic and attractive and really whimsical. With that said, the game itself is fine. It's a little too simple. All you're really doing is drawing cards and putting them in bowls. There's a little bit of take that action with, you know, the spoons or the chili pepper slash nori, but there isn't really enough to make this very engaging. That, and since you can eat the bowls pretty much at any point, like you could put one ingredient on and just flip it if you're just like, okay, I've just gotta score quickly. You can end the game prematurely, and yeah, I'm sure you play multiple rounds, but it's not engaging enough that I would want to play multiple rounds of this game. Like, I didn't need this to be super complex or nuanced, but there's not, like, a huge incentive to play more. The best light card games feature enough strategy or satisfaction in their gameplay that you get kind of hooked on playing multiple rounds. Like, oh, okay, let's play another one, let's play another one. Um, after one game of Ramen Fury, all you really feel like you accomplish is you put some cards on bowls. Sometimes you might have taken a ingredient from a bowl. You can only do it twice per game, which uh, is pretty limiting. Otherwise, you're just kind of matching conditions. It's extremely light with no real substance for me. I think there are better card games out there that are light and quick, but more interesting. Like, for example, Point Salad, I think, is like a very light card game, but very fun to play. This, I wish it could live up to the aesthetic of the packaging, because there's some interesting ideas. I don't know, maybe it needs more spoon tokens, but then it might be too mean for some people. Uh, but for me, having more decisions to make and maybe more player interaction, I think would have helped this game out quite a bit. Otherwise, it's a pretty game with not a lot going on. So I don't know if I can recommend it, but it looks nice. Makes you want to eat ramen. Come on, ramen, no.